In the last section, you learned how to add and subtract polynomials. In this section, we're going to learn how to multiply polynomials together. We're going to break this up into three different areas of learning. The first is how to multiply a monomial, that is, an expression with a single term, by a polynomial, an expression with many terms. Here, we're simply going to use the distributive property and the properties of exponents we learned in Chapter 8. The second is to multiply two polynomials together using a table. This is useful for multiplying polynomials no matter how many terms they have. The third, and we'll use this way a lot as we move forward into chapters 9 and 10, is to multiply two binomials together using a method called FOIL. FOIL is an acronym that stands for a set of steps that we'll use to multiply these two binomials together. Towards the end of this presentation, you'll learn what the FOIL acronym stands for. First, let's go through how to multiply a monomial, that is an expression with one term, and a polynomial, an expression with many terms. Here's an example. If a problem says, find the product of 2x cubed and the quantity x cubed plus 3x squared minus 2x plus 5. In this case, we can simply use the distributive property. So first, we'll write the problem out, and then we'll show applying the distributive property. 2x cubed times x cubed is shown here as the first term. 2x cubed times 3x squared is the second term, and so on. To simplify each of these individual terms, we need to use the properties of exponents that we used in Chapter 8. If you recall, we had the product of powers property. That's when we multiply together two things that have the same base but different exponents. The first term then, 2x cubed times x cubed, multiplies out to 2x to the sixth. We're adding those exponents together. The second term, the 2 and the 3, multiply together to get 6. And the x cubed and x squared multiply together to get x to the fifth. And so on. This is as simplified as we can write this answer. Notice that we can't add together unlike terms, and there are no like terms in the expression shown here. Next, we're going to multiply two polynomials together using a table. Here's an example of a problem we might use this method to solve. Let's say that I want to multiply together x minus 4 and 3x plus 2. The first thing that I want to do is I want to rewrite any subtraction problems as plus a negative number. This will make it easier to keep track of which negative signs go with which terms. So I'm going to rewrite the first expression, x minus 4, as x plus negative 4. This doesn't change the value of the expression. It's simply writing the same quantity in a slightly different way. Now you'll see why it's helpful to rewrite it as plus a negative 4. So here's the expression that we rewrote on the previous slide. What I'm going to do is I'm going to place the terms x and negative 4 along the left-hand side of a table. And I'm going to place the other terms, 3 and positive 2, across the top of a table. This is a 2 by 2 table because the first polynomial has two terms and the second polynomial has two terms. My table can be as tall or as long as I need. Then what I need to do is in each box in this table, I show the product of its row and its column. So for example, shown in blue here, the column is labeled 3x and the row is labeled x. When I multiply 3x and x together, I get 3x squared. So what goes in this first box is 3x squared. I'll repeat this process for the other three boxes in the table. If you take a moment to study this table, you'll see that the entry in each square within the table is the product of the column and the row that it's in. Now all I need to do is take these four terms that are in the four individual boxes and add them all together. So 3x squared plus 2x minus 12x minus 8. Notice that here I do have two like terms that I can combine. The positive 2x and the negative 12x add together to make negative 10x. 
So the result, the product, when I multiply the original two binomials together, is 3x squared minus 10x minus 8. Now it's time for you to do some practice. Please pause this presentation and work through this first problem. In this case, you can simply use the distributive property to find this product. Once you've worked through, please resume the presentation and see if you got it right. Let's see how to work through this product. In this case, we're simply applying the distributive property. So the first term, x times 7x squared, and the second term is x times 4. When we simplify those terms using the rules of exponents from chapter 8, we see that the first term becomes 7x cubed, and the second term becomes 4x. And that's as simplified as we can get it. There's no more combining to be done. Now, try using a table to find the product of these two binomials. Again, please pause the presentation as you work through attempting this problem. And when you think you have it correct, please resume the presentation to see how you did. So the solution to this is to create a table that has a and positive 3 down one side and 2a and positive 1 across the top. Then we'll fill in each of the boxes in this table based on multiplying its column and its row. Please note that if you wrote the a and 3 across the top and the 2a and 1 down the side, that's fine. It doesn't matter whether you put the first polynomial down the bottom or the first polynomial across the top. This is because multiplication is commutative. We can do multiplication problems in either order. When we then add together the terms in this table, 2a squared plus a plus 6a plus 3, we'll combine the like terms, the a and the 6a, add together to become 7a. So the correct answer is 2a squared plus 7a plus 3. Try this one more time using a table and see if you can multiply together 4n minus 1 and n plus 5. Again, please pause the presentation while you work through solving this problem with a table and then check and see if you got your answer right when you resume the presentation. So the first thing that's helpful is to rewrite the subtraction as an addition problem in each polynomial. So I'll rewrite that first binomial as 4n plus negative 1. Then I can place these terms down the side and across the top of a table. When I do that, I'll have 4n and negative 1 on one side and n and positive 5 across the top. And I'll fill in the squares within the table by multiplying the row and column together for each one. Then I'll combine the four terms in the table and I'll get 4n squared plus 20n minus n minus 5 or 4n squared plus 19n minus 5. One last thing we're going to do is to multiply polynomials together without using a table. Here's an example of a problem we might use this for. 2x plus 3 times 4x plus 1. This is where we're going to remember the expression FOIL. FOIL stands for the order that we're going to multiply all of these terms together, and it helps us keep track to make sure that we're doing all of the correct multiplication. F stands for first. Notice the red arrow shown in the problem. 2x times 4x gives us 8x squared. We multiply the first terms of the binomials together. O stands for outer. We multiply the outer terms of these two binomials together. This is shown by the black arrow above the problem on the left. So 2x times positive 1 is 2x. I stands for inner. This is shown by the black arrow below the problem at the left. The inner terms here are 3 and 4x. When we multiply 3 times 4x, we have 12x. And the L stands for last. 3 times 1 is positive 3. 
Notice that if you take the first letters of these, first, outer, inner, last, they spell the word foil. So let's practice this. If we're going to multiply 3a plus 4 times a minus 2 using the foil pattern, shown here, the first term, 3a times a, that's the product of the first terms in the binomial. What's shown next, 3a times negative 2, that's the product of the outer terms. What's shown next, 4 times a, that's the product of the inner terms. And what's shown last, 4 times negative 2, is the product of the last terms. Now we multiply each of these individually. 3a times a gives us 3a squared. 3a times negative 2 gives us negative 6a. 4 times a gives us 4a. And 4 times negative 2 gives us negative 8. Finally, we combine the like terms, the outer and inner in FOIL, combined together. Negative 6a and positive 4a leaves us negative 2a.